Was Why don't we do high on one, two, three? <laughs> one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> one, two, three. Hi! So today we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of being a hairdresser because as you might know, we are both hairdressers. I have been doing hair professionally for five years. Been doing it for six. So we're just gonna go over the pros and cons because we've got a little bit of experience here and yeah. there. So let's start with the first pro. The first one is that you pretty much have a lot of freedom when it comes to expressing yourself. We can do tattoos, we can do piercings, we can do whatever hair color we Any want. Hair color. It's actually encouraged. I've walked in the jaws and they've looked at me and been like, why is your hair brown? Yeah. Because <laughs> you're definitely a walking billboard. Yeah. I've been told that you probably have two. You're one of the few hairdressers uh -huh. that don't have any tattoos. Yeah, no. Like it's very zero. It's super common. And so <gasps> we should go to get shears like on our face <laughs> or something. Be the most basic. Right? Or like just <laughs> right a here. clipper. Just there. A guard. Can I have a number one? Can I get a comb just <laughs> right across? Like I, right just here? a rat tail comb. Please. please. So yeah, you get to express yourself pretty free. <laughs> I'm picturing us with a fucking tattoo on the side of our face of <laughs> a fucking comb. And we're both taking pictures like Right? Just ooh. <laughs> Look at our tattoo. Oh. But yeah, it's pretty expressive and that's nice. We get a lot of customers who want to do those crazy colors. They're afraid. But they're afraid or they can't because they're- And it's they're... not professional. Right, they can't because their job won't let them. Like I worked at a salon where one time a woman, she worked for Disney mm -hmm. and she was going on vacation for like two weeks. So she literally did her hair turquoise for two, for two weeks, weeks. <laughs> and then came back and they had to somehow take it out of her hair. But now a con, I think this is one of the biggest cons is that it's so hard on our body. I personally get a lot of shoulder pain. Also, I will say that a lot of it is kind of our fault because we are taught <laughs> to stand a certain way while cutting, you while really blow drying. That. But do we do it? No. no. When you're a blow drying girl, you ain't gonna stand like this, <laughs> keep your arms up. You're one hip, you're leaning on the station because you're tired, your arms hurt. What are the weirdest like injuries you've heard from hairdressers? I think the weirdest one I've heard is somebody like had issues with their neck because they spent so much time looking down when they were cutting hair and he had to like train himself to like look down with his eyes. People have issues with their hips because we do the same leg yep. to pump up the chair. Well, I went to the chiropractor and he told me that one of my legs was shorter than the other. <laughs> and I was so bothered. I was like, oh, do I need that shoe that makes it bigger? <laughs> and the guy goes, no, it's just because we lean. Uh -huh. So our hip joints are like different. So he yanked my leg and got on top of me and popped me all over and I just walked very nice after that. My feet would hurt a lot too. People would make fun oh, of me because yeah. I would buy shoes that are like more- Your ugly shoes. Yes, my yes. ugly shoes. But I can't like not do it because my feet will just kill me. Mm -hmm. If actually having bad shoes affects my back more than it does my feet. Yeah, all my shoes kill me because I always have- <laughs> This <to> one! <laughs> We'll come in with like these sparkly shoes, like these boots, and he's like, oh my God, my feet are killing me. And I'm like, I wonder why. But I look cute. <laughs> Meanwhile. Sarah's right now, over here with her, her restaurant, <laughs> non-slip, <laughs> grease protecting shoe. Yep. But we get back pain, shoulder pain, neck, neck pain, pain, leg pain, pain <laughs> like- Feet. It's just a lot of pain, and hairdressers often get carpal tunnel, and. All kinds of. And I think every shampoo bowl in a salon should be able to raise up or lower depending on how tall you are. Yep. So like I'm 5'7", you're 6'1". Six, I'm 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one. So it even hurt me. So I can't even imagine yeah. how bad it was for you. Yeah. We were both like at the bowl like trying to do oh, some yeah. crazy positions to try to make it feel better. But awful. get yourself a massage therapist, a chiropractor, and a physical therapist. Yes. And good pills. Yes. And you're good to go. The next pro is one that personally to me was something that was really appealing about this industry. You can be your own boss. I mean, there's multiple ways you can do it. You are now. I am my own Yay. boss. Woo! Finally. Ah. <laughs> you can work for a corporation and that's good for starting out, but after a while, mm. No. And then you can work for a private salon or you can booth rent or you can have like your own studio, which is what I'm doing but it's nice because this career, you can set your own hours, you can do what you want. It's you just, are your own boss and don't have to answer to anyone. Yeah, it's easier mm. to start up being your own boss as a hairdresser than to probably just start like a whole 
yeah. new business oh, for yeah. sure. And it's definitely common in this industry. But one of the problems with that is we don't really get benefits in this job. Even in corporate salons. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Even in corporate salons, it wasn't until like recently that they started giving benefits. And our benefits suck. Our benefits are the they worst. They were awful. The worst, the worst, the worst. So it's kind of ironic because it's a career that's so hard on your body. And then they're like, yeah, we're gonna like burn you to the ground, but we're not gonna pay. So you either have that or you're your own boss and you get nothing. You have to like do it on your own. Yeah. And just in general, the hair industry doesn't have many benefits. Like sick days are not really a thing. So, so be careful. <clears throat> um, marry rich so that you can have your insurance yeah. or marry someone that has good insurance because chances are you, uh, you're you probably not gonna get any insurance. So the next pro is that this is such a creative field. You get to do things how you want. Okay, and, yeah. Yeah, and- So like how we say there's different avenues to achieve the same result. Yeah. So like in school, they teach you the basics. Like this yeah. is how you cut a layer. And this is how you lay a foil we're told the rules, but then it's almost like you're told them so you know how to break them. Yeah, exactly. We always say there's a That's like- That's where I was going with Yeah, that. there's a million <laughs> ways to get the same result and you can kind of have fun with it. Like some hairdressers come up with some crazy stuff. I personally am not, don't advocate for these, but you see those people who like light hair on fire and yeah. all that stuff. Like I don't do that, but- I try it. <laughs> I would love to. Like, <laughs> Anybody some who wants their fire. hair set on fire, <laughs> here you go. But there's lots of ways to do things, and then when you do get clients who give you that freedom, you then can kind of. You get kinda... nervous. <laughs> yeah, you get nervous when it's someone. Like, are you sure? When someone says do whatever you want, that's like the most yeah. nerve-wracking thing ever. Um, but at the same time, it is fun to like give someone a new. Oh yeah. Look. Exactly. Like especially someone that like knows nothing about hair, doesn't know how to style it. I love giving guys that have like kind of like unkept hair like a nice sleek oh, look. Yes. Like that's really nice. Like a crew, like yeah, yeah, yeah. sleek back. And like pushing it up. Cause it really doesn't take much, but it looks so good. So you get to be creative and do lots of different things. One of the problems with people seeing how creative and how there's so many ways to do these things is a lot of people think that they can do it themselves and they can't always do it themselves. Like a lot of no. YouTube. We've YouTube, seen a, Instagram yes, stylists. We've seen a lot of YouTube mishaps. And one thing that's hard with that is you'll get these people who come in who saw it on YouTube and now they think they know everything about hair and they think yep. they know how to do it. Especially when it comes to color. Yes, and so then they're trying to tell you how to do it and it's just like, mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> no, honey. I know you've had a lot of people sit down and be like, um, I know what you should be doing. Yeah. And this doesn't look right. You're not holding your fingers correctly. Right, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> girl, I went to school for this. <laughs> I'm in debt for this. Right? That can get frustrating because people don't trust you. Like yep. they'll sit in your chair and it's like- They're controlling. Yeah, they want you to do it their way. And it's like, they don't, going back to what we said, they don't understand that there's a million ways to get the same result. Yep. So they want you to do it that one way. Yep. And I might not be comfortable with that way. Like for instance, um, a balayage. I'm not a fan of the teasing technique personally. Okay. Cause I just don't like teasing hair, but you know, I know. <laughs> I like teasing hair. <laughs> I don't like doing updos. I really don't, I hate it. <laughs> I'll cut hair all day, but don't give me an updo because I'll go cry. <laughs> but like you will do teasing on people, oh, yeah. but we could still both do an ombre. Yeah. There's multiple ways, but people will see like that one person who did it this one way and they like, oh, now I'm triggered. When they come in and they say, but my last hairstylist didn't oh, do girl, it Oh girl, I way. don't give a f Am, am I your last hairstylist? No, and if girl. she was so great, why, Go back to her. why are you in my chair if she was so great? That's probably the most irritating thing is yeah. my hair, old hairstylist did it this way. Girl, I'm not your old hairstylist now, am I? Yep. No. So I'm gonna do things different. So that can be really frustrating. And also a lot of issue with people being like YouTube stylists, which we'll call them. Yeah. Um, is they will see fashion colors, which is really mm -hmm. big right now, the silver. Mm. Um, the rainbow hair, and they will come in thinking that they have jet black hair out of a box, and we can just put the pink and purple over top of it, and it's gonna come out pastel, and 
super bright and beautiful. That's not how it works. And you try to explain it to them. They're like, look, you have jet black hair. This has to be blonde and it's gonna be a long process. Yeah. But then, you know, they see celebrities like yep. Kylie Jenner who get blonde hair yep. like that. And it's like, first of all, she's wearing a wig. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Second of all, the one time she did do that, she fried all her hair yeah, off. Yeah, she can afford and Yeah, she can afford <laughs> the hairstylist because that type of work takes like, 12, 15 hours. Yeah, probably you, two or three sessions coming into the salon. Like Kylie Jenner didn't sit there for three hours and she was done. No. She had a hairstylist come to her house most likely and was there all day. Yeah. And so people don't get that even though you explain it to them over and over and over again because they just have this mindset yeah. in their head about how it's gonna be. Triggered, now the trigger's gone, <laughs> next. All right, so another pro and like we're both pretty social so this is a nice one is you meet a lot of cool people like in your chair, even though there's a lot of bad apples, mm -hmm. like you do get a lot of really cool people. And Very can... good looking. Yes. Sometimes you can find people who do the work that you need. Mm -hmm. Like you'll do a doctor's hair, oh, you'll yeah. do a dentist's hair, mm -hmm. you'll do a mechanic's hair. Like tattoo artist. <laughs> yeah, so all these things. Like I had a client who worked at SeaWorld and she was like, I have free tickets. Do you want to go? And I was like, Yes. Hey, yeah, you get to hear a lot of cool stories. Yeah. Too. With us being in Orlando, like we literally meet people from all over the world. A lot you cannot understand. Yeah, it's true. But you <laughs> still make the connection. Yes. You're like, what was that? Yep. <laughs> Does anybody in here speak German? Like, yeah, no. <laughs> and so the next con, we kind of brushed on this a little bit, but a lot of people have unrealistic expectations. Like they just all like, the time. Like the wanting to be blonde in one sitting, it's like that's not gonna happen. Or wanting me. to be super silver, platinum blonde, and then right. get a perm so right. they have curly hair. Yeah. And not just like with services, they also have a lot of unrealistic expectations about prices, about like our availability. Like they want us there 24 seven. People just want so much from you and you try to tell them it's not doable and mm -hmm. they just like, they don't. They want as much as you can give them. Yes. For the cheapest amount of money. Yes. And it's annoying. I yes. always say that we are not a flea market. There's no bargaining. We, you don't go into a restaurant and get the flame mignon and ask if, can I have the $100 flame mignon for like $25? $45 instead <laughs> of $100? Because you know, it's a little expensive. Then don't come here. It is a luxury, Ugh. not a necessity. And not only that, but also when it comes to timing, like people want you to do hair at lightning speed. Oh yeah. They're like, it's 5.45 and I have to be somewhere at six and it's across town. Yes. Um, do you think you could do my hair before then? then and like, they have hair out. like down to here, yeah. super thick. Sorry. We don't have a magical wand to just do these things. Like hair can really take some time. Oh yeah. So my hair has a lot of red in it. If I tried to go blonde, <laughs> I would laugh at you and send you out the door. First of all, it would melt off. Um, but it would take like so much time, so much money, so much, even though it doesn't seem that difficult because, you know, it's just one color going to blonde. It would be so much work. Like, yeah. So yeah, much. it would take a lot of like bleaching process. Yes, when your hairdresser tells you it's gonna take a while, they're not trying to scam you or anything. They're no. trying to save your hair. Yes. They know that if they just do it right then, right there, you risk it ending up on the floor. And also, I'm just gonna throw in something that's not on our list. Okay. If you're going to get your color done, and it's gonna be a long process, leave everybody in your family at home. Yes. Don't bring all 17 of your children into the salon. Yes. While you're getting a five hour color done where they're just gonna run around and scream and you have to get up and no. It'll be so much faster if you're not taking care of them mm -hmm. while you're sitting in my chair. Yeah. So the next pro, I think this is what a lot of hairstylists go into the industry for. And that's just to make people feel better and yeah. yeah. To boost confidence. Yeah. I mean, that's why I went into it. Yeah, I think we can all say that we've had those stories of people being so happy. They want to hug you because oh, yeah. they're just so happy. Like the people who cry and you don't know if they yeah. hate it or if they love yeah, it. Yeah, you're they end like, up why are super you Super loving it. It's like, okay, now I'm nervous. <laughs> I think one of my favorites is when you get somebody who has been trying to be what society wanted them to be for so long, mm -hmm. like women who want really short hair, but they've kept it long their whole life, and then they finally decide. Because they're afraid they've heard that they're gonna look lesbian yes, or butch or, or something. Girl, who cares? Right, or their husband didn't like it long, or didn't like it short, or their parents wouldn't let them. That's a big one, is a lot of kids yeah. 
can't do it because their parents won't let them. So as soon as they turn 18, they come in and then you finally get to give them like the person that they've always wanted to be. Yeah. And so that's always really nice. You will never know the feeling of somebody walking out, like shaking their hair, taking pictures of it in mm -hmm. front of you, looking at themselves in the mirror, flipping it all around. It's the best feeling. Yeah. There's a lot of emotions that come with being a hairdresser. I think people yeah. don't realize because we do make such a connection with our customers. A lot of people will say like hairstylists are like therapists and they come to us to like decompress and you know. We hear some stories. Yes. We <laughs> we hear stories. That we didn't ask to hear. Yeah. But, well sometimes but I it's, ask. But it's fun. <laughs> it's fun because then you get the tea on everything. You do. Because this one girl I knew that her, I'm not saying names, but I knew that her husband, she just caught running around with this other woman and she was coming up to go to his work to go surprise him with the other woman because she made friends with her. She's telling me all this and I was like, ooh, bitch, you better come back in and tell me the rest of this story. <laughs> Film it and send it to me. Did she come back? No. Oh. Well, if you're gonna do that, come back and tell us. Right. We're nosy. Right, <laughs> write me, send me an email. Right, like leave it. Call me. A text, yeah, like, leave send, a note on the Look me up in the phone book. Something. Like, like, they still have phone book? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's online. I don't know. Right? Do they still have phone Do books? Do they still make phone books? <laughs> oh, us millennials. Yeah. We don't know anything. So one con, cause like we are talking about how you build these relationships with your clients. When you go to move to like a new state, a new city, new, even a new job, new salon. you have to rebuild. Like you're starting all over. So on one hand, it's mm -hmm. nice cause hairdressers can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, you have to rebuild every time yep. you move. Yeah. I mean, especially you, look at you, you had a, I would say a steady clientele coming mm -hmm. in for haircuts, waxes, colors. And now after the whole coronavirus, like you're struggling getting those people. Yeah. So it's all, you're always gonna have to be building. Yeah. It's just, you're gonna lose people. Yeah. You're gonna gain them. Yeah. So. And sometimes you don't know why they left mm -hmm. and you're wondering like, what was it? Send out like a survey. <laughs> <laughs> like I have one client, I, I don't know what happened. I'm like, you were my two weeks. Where'd you go? Yeah. Like, come back. They still alive? Hopefully. Okay. That's another thing. You wonder if they're still alive. I've had um, cancer patients come in, you know, to cut their hair. Oh, yeah. And then you always wonder afterwards, like, yeah. when I worked at Great Clips, there was a girl who came in and she had, um, I think it was ovarian cancer. Mm -hmm. So sad. Like, her mom came with her and I, like, did, like, a number two all over. And it, I was like, well, have you, you know, gotten a hysterectomy? And she was like, yeah. And she's like, and it's still just... Spread everywhere. Yeah, and she looked very sick and everything. And I've always wondered, like... You know what? her name? No. Oh. I only did her hair that one time. And then never again. That's sad. Yeah, so... Well, we hope she's still alive. I hope you're still, still alive if you're out there. I was at the gorgeous hair now, Yes. Girl. I was at the Great Clips in uh, Oak Grove, Milwaukee. Somewhere in Oregon. <laughs> And you set them down and you can still yep. feel like the... Yep. My southern just came out. <laughs> you can still feel... <laughs> still feel the vibration like in your hand yes. and stuff. This is one of the main reasons I went into the industry is it's a... You want to say that again? <laughs> I know, I'm a... <laughs> I don't need, 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 need. I'll be editing and I'll be like, what the hell did I say? Why does my hat keep slipping off my head? <laughs> you got a big head. <laughs> Hi. Take two. One of the main reasons that attracted me to the hair industry was being my own. <laughs> Get with the program! <laughs> I can't focus, okay. Here we go. I'm yeah. not gonna look at you. Ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs> One of the main reasons I got into the industry personally, and it's that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't know! I think I'm broken! <laughs> God. I'm hot. It's how you lay a foil. And mm -hmm. But. This is how you lay a foil. <laughs> um. <laughs> Damn it! And this is how you lay a foil. And different things like that. <laughs> Just make sure my oil one goes in there. <laughs> Your oil or. My foil. Okay. <laughs> full. <laughs> okay. You can be 
your own boss if you <laughs> Oh God! Ooh, collect myself. <laughs> That's why you're a TikToker, and not a YouTuber. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So the next pro is that even though we did talk about how when you do move, um, it can be hard to rebuild. The nice thing about this industry is you can always find work. It is so always. easy.